morning. morning. Welcome to worship with us on this glorious Sunday. It's September 15th, 2024. And we're with Osceola United Methodist Church in Osceola, Wisconsin. And I'm pleased to see all the faces here in our congregation. All of them, everyone, oh, some returning, oh, it's wonderful. And, uh, and imagine all of those who are joining us online at this same time or sometime hereafter. I'm Reverend Joanne Sylvander. I'm a grateful participant in the life of this congregation. And I'm filling in today for our pastor, Reverend Jack Starr, who is away for the weekend and glad to, to do so, honored to be with you. These last several weeks and months, we've been considering the fruits of the Spirit as given to us <coughs> in Paul's letter to the Galatians in chapter 5, 22. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I just want to reveal something. There's a cheat list down here. Happy to see it. <laughs> um, I've chosen to wrestle today with the self-control. Right here in your presence. <laughs> with particular attention to how we use our tongue. It is the gift of speech. Having respectful conversation seems to be the solution for addressing the great divide we're all experiencing in our country and communities or families. Coaching opportunities on how to do this are popping up all over. What can we gain from our faith resources and reserves to at least get through this election season and its aftermath. We're invited to explore the difficult gift of the spirit, self-control, to marshal, that is to gather together, to sort out our knowledge and our intentions and our energies, and then to direct them wisely as we seek truth in love. This takes practice and grace. Here in this community of faith, it's a good place for us to get some exercise. So let us be together in worship and will you join me in the call to worship and our preparation for worship, um, which is, yeah, it's, it's here on the mic. And uh, if you wish to stand during this, maybe that's too much. Well, no, we're exercise. I'm talking about exercise today, so okay, we'll exercise as best we can when we can. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is a great reward. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. If you're willing, let's continue standing and sing a wonderful words of life. You may be seated. A reading from the Old Testament. Proverbs 1, 2 through 7. The Proverbs of Solomon, King David's son from Israel, their purpose is to teach wisdom and discipline to help one understand wise sayings. They provide insightful instruction, which is righteous, just, and full of integrity. They make the naive mature, the young knowledgeable and discreet. The wise hear them and grow in wisdom. Those with understanding gain guidance. They help one understand proverbs and difficult sayings. The words of the wise and their puzzles. Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. A reading from the, the epistle, James 3, 1 through 5, and 13 through 18. My brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers because we know that we teachers will be judged more strictly. We all make mistakes often. But those who don't make mistakes with their words have reached full maturity. Like a bridled horse, they can control themselves entirely. When we bridle horses and put bits in their mouths to lead them wherever we want, we can control their whole bodies. Consider ships. They are so large that strong winds are needed to drive them. But pilots guide their ships wherever they want with a little rudder. In the same way, even though the tongue is a small part of the body, it boasts wildly. Are any of you wise and understanding? Should your actions, 
show that your actions are good with the humble lifestyle that comes from wisdom. However, if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, then stop bragging and living in ways that deny the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above. Instead, it is from the earth, natural and demonic. Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and everything that is evil. What is the wisdom from above? First, it is pure, and then peaceful, gentle, obedient, filled with mercy and good actions, fair and genuine. Those who make peace sow the seeds of justice by their peaceful acts. And a reading from the Gospel, Mark 8, 27 through 33. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked the disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began teaching him that the Son of Man should undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days, rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but human things. May God bless the hearing and understanding of this portion of scripture. Thanks be to God. This is time for prayer. 
time to continue in prayer. And we're going to do so together because it is such a privilege to do so before God and before our beloved community. So when we pray, we're invited to lift up the names of the people who are on your heart and your concerns. You can lift them up out loud and we will um, then affirm your prayer by saying, um, Lord, in your love, and you respond, hear this, our prayer. People invited uh, to uh, set a chat into the uh, online system and we'll um, hopefully receive your prayer. Uh, and in the back of the bulletin or on, in the last pages, there are many, um, there are listings of things to remember in prayer. I want to call your attention to that. And, um, and if you wish to look at that, you might choose something from there that you would like to hold in prayer. Our God, we know you are present, and we call your attention to our presence here together as we offer to you what is on our heart, in our minds, in our hopes, and our fears. We lift them up to you. Are there some prayers that you would like to have lifted up today? Okay, this prayer is for your brother-in-law? It's my sister's father-in-law. Sister's father-in-law, okay. Sister's father-in-law, Rick Engstrom, who is um, struggling in, in uh, United Hospital. And Rod asks, is offering his prayers for the family, for those who are caring for, for Rick that they may have courage and strength for what is ahead for them. Lord, in your love. I want to offer a prayer of gratitude for Margaret being with us today in worship. We're pleased that you are able to join us. May God bless you and help, help us all to be encouraged by your strength. Lord, in your love. Yes. These are prayers for Aunt Sister Joan, whose family is having struggles at this time. Lord, in your love. Yes, Fern. Okay, prayers. Um, for Fern's sister, Jean, and, and her husband, Joe, who are having many struggles at this time. Lord, in your love. Yeah. 
oh God, I wish that I could say out loud all of the cares and concerns that we have, lift up the names of all those listed in our bulletin, and yet you know. So know also that we care and that we will listen to see how it is that you might lead us to be your arms, your voice, your energy, and your love in their lives as they also nurture us in our lives. Let us join together also now in the prayer our Lord has given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver, not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We also offer up a prayer of dedication during this season of prayer during our worship. You no longer pass an offering basket, or, but there is an offering box back there and there's a, a plate up here and, and you're invited to um, offer your gifts in that way. Also, people are giving online, so sending things into the church. And in so many ways, this congregation is giving of their wealth and energy. And so we are grateful for this, and in doing so, we are dedicating and thanking you and thanking God for the gifts that you are sharing. So will you join me in this prayer of dedication for our gifts? Lord God, you share your grace with us, giving us hope in your son, Jesus. In gratitude and thanks, we offer you our hearts, our lives, and all that we have. May our offerings be an answer to your call to free the trapped, heal the broken, and show your good news to the poor and helpless. Bless these signs of our love, Lord, as we proclaim your glory to all people. Amen. And let us sing our hymn of preparation. Lord, speak to me.
it is helpful to have someone else reading the scripture because then I listen. I thought, oh my. Things like the teacher, be careful, you know. Because we make lots of mistakes. And I'm thinking, I'm putting myself forward and, and thinking, oh dear, I want to talk about good speaking. And I'm thinking of all the muttering and putzing I do around. And I think, okay, this is a bold thing for me to do. But I'm going to do it in a kind community. Thank you for going through this with me. Self-control. Able to marshal. I love this. This is the, from the message from Eugene's and um, Peterson's interpretation. To marshal, I'm thinking of herding, kind of, and direct all our energies wisely. That's what self-control is. Looking at it that way, I dared to take this fruit of the Spirit on, right in front of you. Socially, the term self-control for me doesn't really, isn't very popular. It isn't a very favorable kind of message. It feels uh, like bossy or self-righteous, you know, goody-goody, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't always sell too well for me. And well, it is about controlling. And that doesn't also have such a, a good, um, at least most of the time, I don't want somebody to tell me what to do all the time. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're telling you what to do today. <laughs> and I can say all this about self-control because I realize that I have been quite good at it. I wasn't much fun on a date at the fraternity parties. You see, I saw a person suffer from a hangover a second time. And it made no sense to me. Why would you ever do it again? Don't you learn? I didn't eat chocolate in high school because I thought it would give me pimples. And yet, I made brownies for the rest of the family, and I didn't even lick the spoon. Smugness has its own reward. Now, considering speech, I remember in grade school hearing words I never heard at home. And while walking to school, I would practice saying them, not out loud. And the idea was that if I talked like them, I would fit in better. It never did become natural. And I certainly would never let one slip at home or in proper company. My adult children would uh, snicker when I boldly quote something literally that contains what would likely be a bleep on family TV. And there are still some words that I cannot and I will not say. And obviously, I can't tell you what they are. There are even some songs I cannot sing. The lump in my throat will not allow me. And I do marshal in and direct and I ponder, and that often makes quick decisions very difficult, which can really frustrate others. So how am I handling this assignment? I'm doing a new thing. This is the first time I'm ever preached from the letter of James. In fact, I don't even remember reading it. And then from the book of Proverbs. The first thing I discovered when learning about Jesus, or J about James, was that um, the book of James looks a bit like the Proverbs dressed up in New Testament clothes 
Now this is from Chuck Swindle on the site called God's Masterwork. Now I gave you that to show you that I know, you know, I know how to use the internet and get information. I know this is a new thing because I don't know how to um, footnote blogs and I don't know what to do with that. I don't know how to do that right. But it was really engaging and I had a hard time stopping because there's so much information. I learned that James may have been Jesus' half-brother and sometimes called Jacob. His writings were very early, directed to the Jewish people in and around Jerusalem. He talked about the synagogue rather than the church because the church hadn't been created yet. And many of the believers were still in hiding. James offered instructions on how to behave, not just how to think. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Several decades later, when the good news of Jesus, the risen Christ, was scattered throughout all of the Gentile nations, Paul was preaching salvation by works and not by faith and not works. The letter of James barely made it into the canon. Martin Luther called it an epistle of straw. I can imagine an engaging debate over justification by faith alone as opposed to gaining salvation through good deeds. And that kind of scholarly recreation can be fun, but it doesn't really address the needs of today. Proverbs and James are filled with advice. In fact, they are rather preachy. And so I'm going to go ahead and share some. I'm going to be telling you what to do and what to say. I'll read some more of the Proverbs for you. Rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Wisdom is with those who take advice. Know-it-alls avoid the company of wise men and women. A quiet rebuke to a person of good sense does more than a whack on the head of a fool. Answering before listening is both stupid and rude. The wise learn by listening. An honest answer is like a warm hug. I have to admit that a lot of these are, are Eugene Peterson's from the message interpretation. So you probably didn't read it as stupid and rude and things like that. And James, if you don't know what you are doing, pray. God loves to help. You'll get help and you won't be condescended to when you ask. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. And make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. James wasn't very subtle, but he is practical, and that means something you can do, practice. So much goes wrong between us these days because of our language, the way we use our tongue. For these moments, let's concern ourselves with our behavior, with what we can do, with what we can change. You know, one of the effects of our contemporary communication tools is that some things we have said or written can never be forgotten. And words really 
matter. Words can hurt, and words can heal. And what makes the difference is how we use the words or do not use them. Oh, so many ways to sin. It's a phrase in our family a lot. Oh. Yeah, there are. But certainly not all sins are equal. And yet, remorse over what I said or didn't say can be relentless whether being called out by someone else or by my own self-reflection and examination. Well, here's an example. The in entertainment comes a lot in like the reality shows where we might catch ourselves joining in the laughter as the characters behave badly. Anger is stirred up, there's shouting, there's actual fighting, and we laugh at that. That's what a little self-reflection might do when we think, why am I laughing? Is that noticing not part of our self-revelation? A call to confession. Doing so, we might just think, I want to do better. This is the thing I think I can do something about. And there aren't many of those. And this is where our faith practices can be helpful. Lament. Whoa. I'm really sorry. I feel bad. I know regret. And it can happen not just by cursing or using foul words, but by using nice words that spread gossip. Or saying something that we think we, that should be helpful. It's justifiable criticism for their own good. Oh, no, more for me to feel guilty about. Rightly so. What does faith say? As James said, pray and confess together. Continue in prayer. Forgive all our sins. And then get specific. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Consider, what was I thinking? What could I have said? I'm sorry. Thank you. What did Jesus do? In our passage from the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is with his closest companions, and he wants to know what they're thinking about him. Peter pipes up, you're the Messiah, you're the one, you're the real thing here. And then Jesus tells his friends about what's ahead for him, and therefore for them. And Peter takes him aside and scolds Jesus, don't talk like that. I'm guessing there was a pause. And he uttered, get behind me, Satan. Jesus wasn't addressing Paul. He was responding to that which was within himself. Another theologian discussing the teachings of Jesus said something like this. To be captive to God's truth is where we find real freedom. Get that? To be captive 
to God's truth is to find real freedom. Freedom is tied to obedience. Obedience has some constraints. It helps in eliminating some choices. And duty turns into choice. I have another confession. I can't remember where I said that. I couldn't find the link. What about these respectful conversations we've been hearing about? What is true? What is my truth? What is helpful? Just this past week, a fellow was giving his story of hope, and he described his former self speaking to his wife. <clears throat> I'm yelling at you for your own good. You need to come around to my way of thinking. Listen to yourself. This causes hesitation, and that's a good thing. Am I in a contest to win? Do I need to change the other? I look underneath. I do want to be helpful. I don't want to be hurtful. I do fear being seen as unkind or uncaring. In fact, I'm afraid of doing it wrong. Even though I don't really want anyone to be stuck on the wrong path either. See my judgment there? Take caution. I may be still under the impulse of othering and when we are still holding the assumption that the other is wrong or misguided and needs to be saved, it is very hard for the caring to come across. Hard speaking is rooted in caring. Don't take it on if all you want to do is to win or if you just need to blow off steam. Vengeance is a lazy form of grief. The default is to create a bad other, an enemy. It takes courage to care out loud, to risk being touched, being changed, in return, to keep our hearts open, to open up to a respectful conversation, we expose ourselves and our hearts to pain. And there are those who are so deep in suffering and in pain, they are not able to change. Those of us who are not bound in such deep pain and suffering do have space, the capacity to learn. Let's give it a try. I have an exercise for us to practice. Um, I've got a couple of statements here, and I want to say the first word, part of it is to think of what you're thinking, and I'll say the words as if it were what you were thinking. And then afterwards, you think, how could I have said it kindly? Uh, now, this is one of those places where I think um, you don't have to say everything you think. Remember that. And also, I was looking at that proverb that said, you know, quick to listen and um, slow to speak. If you have a response, I, I'm inviting you to, to speak it out if you'd like, or even just 
chatter with someone else and say, what do you think? What about this one? So let's give it a try. Okay. This is what I'm thinking. It's not very likely, but I could be wrong. Now, that's what I'm thinking. How could I say it differently? All right, yeah. We don't have to say that likely, not very likely, but we don't have to say that. That's our personal stuff. Right, so a lot of it is what you don't say. Yes, I may be wrong. You're right, yeah. So, so this next one is kind of, you know, it, it can go this, that, a lot of it goes this way. Okay, how did you ever come to think this way? It's so different. It's interesting to share opinions. Okay, yeah. I just even want to point out that one. How did you ever? That word is totally unnecessary. So even just simply say, how did you come to this? I've got another suggestion. I'm sorry, I'm not hearing it. Where did you get that idea? Oh, but where did you get that idea? Okay, that's another, you know, I think that's in my A category here. Yeah. Okay, I've got one more. Don't you think you should reconsider that position? Yes. Help me, think about this way. Help me think about this another way. Yeah. Or even just say, yeah, help me, or tell me more. Tell me more about it. Yeah, help me think some more out loud with me. Yeah. Right now, I want to uh, put in a plug for Braver Angels. I don't know if any of you have heard of that. It's a national-wide organization with local groups whose mission is to help the reds and the blues talk respectfully to each other. And during these months, they have been working with Minnesota Public Radio on a project called Talking Sense. Maybe you've heard it. And their current initiative is Walk a Mile in My News. I haven't tried it yet, but I maybe dare walk a mile in my news. Some contemporary proverbs from Tara Brock, a teacher of meditation, emotional healing, spiritual awakening, said, real security resides on the side of truth. How can we see what we truly long for? Is it not to feel the visceral transference of caring and sense of safety? I want to read that again. How can we see what we truly long for? Is it not to feel the visceral transference of caring and a sense of safety? Develop a strong back and a soft front. Our sense of agency gives us courage, strong back. 
our open heart allows us to care. With clarity, we can discern wisdom from judgment. We need to get over the idea that it is impossible to change. Let's begin today our 500-year plan. I close with another from the letter of James. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak. If any one of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God. And then this one just pretty much covers it all. Again from James. You will do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then this example from Jesus. Stop and go forward in love. Amen. We're singing, help us accept each other. It's on page 560 of the hymnal, if you wish, and the words are up here. <laughs> Sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us, and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O oh Lord, your lesson as in our daily life we struggle to be human and search for hope and faith teach us to care for people for all not just for some to love them as we find them change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love to practice your acceptance until we know my heart <laughs> the table of forgiveness and laughter's here Days encounters with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for justice, and for bread. We need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Renew us with your spirit, Lord, free us. Now, in the time for announcements, I'm thinking over this uh, congregation and thinking, singing that last hymn, all of those things that we're striving to do and to be. Thank you for being that kind of caring and giving congregation. Um, 
And while I'm looking at the bulletin, I want to remind you again about this prayer list and uh, as something to do. Um, I would invite you to take home, take the bulletin home and, and choose a name, a cause here, and hold that name and that cause in your heart for the next week. And let's see how we are changed by being in constant prayer. Um, then there's the rest of the news here. Um, okay. Um, we've got, of course, the farmer's market. And I don't know if we need help with that, where it's going, but please enjoy the farmer's market. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks for that potato booth. <laughs> yes. Oh, good news. Any other announcements? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. If you're interested. Yep. Okay. All right. Let me know by Wednesday or afternoon. Or All right. Good, good news. And a lot of news about from the women's <laughs> fellowship. And D, in addition. Well, oh, great. So, okay.
Okay, well, good news about Farmer's Market and next week's service where the Women's Fellowship are going to be in charge and we're going to get to hear about the Winter Farmer's Market. That's good to know because, boy, I get, I get to missing those good fresh things and, and being with the people that enjoy the same same thing, so do that. And then the following week, we have a confirmation service, right? Is that, no, no, that's in October. We've got another Sunday in between, okay. So you've got another week. <clears throat> you've got another week, okay. Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> <But clears throat> well, and I'm not able to respond to all, or to repeat all of that, our, our Christian community. <laughs> it, it appears that I have said enough. My tongue <laughs> is just tired. Um, there are no more announcements. Let us um, rise if we are able, willing, and share together the benediction as we leave. Enjoy our time together afterwards in the fellowship. Are you rise and share our benediction? We're closing blessing. God of all wisdom, we thank you that we have the opportunity to walk in your light. Guide our steps that your wisdom mercy and justice may shine in all our choices in order that your love and grace may be made known to all. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be peace on earth. be so.